Finally, it hasn't even been a week since the election, and I am already reading. It's all Mitt Romney's fault. All of it. Bull. Not the Mitt Romney I knew. Maybe the Mitt Romney you knew. Maybe the Mitt Romney many in the media wanted you to know, but not the Mitt Romney I knew and know. He lost, but that doesn't make him a loser. Look, the election is done, and you would think that an unrelenting media might finally, finally cut this guy some slack. I've covered many campaigns and many candidates in my life, and I have known few classier, more decent than Mitt Romney, and don't even get me started on his wife, Anne. But I'm not here with a bias, just to show some anger I know I will never see in Romney himself. He is too classy to be catty. I am not. He is too decent to talk about double standards in coverage. I am not. I just find it ironic that a media that seemed fixated on Romney sometimes shifting positions over years didn't apply the same standard to his opponents shifting positions often over months. The Mitt Romney can't evolve on issues like immigration, but apparently Barack Obama can on issues like gay marriage. No, no, no. Rip Romney for contraception views that changed over decades, but say nothing about how in one remarkable week the president's contraception coverage views just to calm angry Catholics changed over days. Mitt's evil because he shifted jobs to China. The president is not when the auto companies he rescued are shifting jobs to China. Now, Paris the thought the media would be fair during the campaign, but to dump on Romney and continue kicking the dog they made after the campaign? Romney deserves better, not for history, for simple decency. A man who loved his wife and proved it, stood by her when she got very sick twice and not once talked about it. So square, I guess, all the easier to put Mr. Romney in a box. A man who came to his employees' aid when they needed it most, but refused to even discuss it on the campaign trail or have any of his people discuss it. A man attacked for getting rich after putting thousands to work, risking his own money. But the president's not so much as mildly reprimanded for losing jobs after spending billions on stimulus and bailouts with our money. No mitts the twit because he can't carry a tune like the president, forgetting the fact he brought down the house at a certain Al Smith dinner, playing a pretty good self-deprecating Bob Newhart to the president. Now, Al, you are right. A campaign can require a lot of wardrobe changes. We, uh, blue jeans in the morning, perhaps, a uh, suit uh, for a lunch fundraiser, sport coat for dinner, but it's nice to finally relax and uh, to wear what Ann and I wear around the house. Uh, <laughs> you know, maybe if little is made of a joke, the media can figure it's like a tree falling in the forest and no one's there, well, we could still make a joke of old Mitt. The joke in the media did, hugely so, disproportionately so, according to one comic. This is true, because the president wasn't as funny, i.e., we like the president. We don't like men. Look, none of this means Romney isn't to blame for his defeat. Perhaps he should have countered more, engaged Latinos more, convinced women more, shown his heart more. I don't know. This much I do know. Mitt Romney deserves a hell of a lot better from a media now swarming Republican Party that would sooner point fingers than ever, ever, ever get a clue. Mitt Romney wasn't the problem. They were and they are. Too wormy to admit it, too arrogant to concede it, too cocksure. Romney offended some of that 47 percent relying on government benefits, but not once, not once questioning how the hell did it get as high as 47 percent relying on government benefits. Romney himself told me he was inelegant. In his words, they were inept in their response and coverage. But why bother when it is easier to throw voters for a loss and just throw old Mitt Romney under the bus? Even after an agonizing defeat, he raised the bar and showed more class. I have just called President Obama to congratulate him on his victory. His supporters and his campaign also deserve congratulations. I wish all of them well, but particularly the president, the first lady, and their daughters. This is a time of great challenges for America, and I pray that the president will be successful in guiding our nation. Very few words of praise for Mitt Romney's overall grace that night, for media and increasingly distancing party more inclined to just treat him like garbage. Again, Mitt is too decent to call them all disingenuous, pretentious, obnoxious, phony asses. Fortunately, I am not.